So it turns out that there's a question that you can accidentally say yes to if you say no too emphatically. And it's a question I get more and more frequently these days. At this point, pretty much once a week, I get an email from somebody who wants to debate me on air. You know, now, most of the time, they expect me to give them airtime on this show so they can tell us how wrong we've got it. But I get a, a fair number of invites from religious shows or shows dedicated to religious debate that want me to come on and argue with some theologian or something. And my answer is always the same. It's no. You know, depending on the professionalism of the person reaching out to me, very often that's the whole email. You know, dear so-and-so, no. Of course, if somebody reaches out respectfully and seems genuinely interested in hosting a debate, I'll politely decline and pass along the names of a few atheist friends that I know that actually enjoy doing that shit. But if it's just some irate jackass who wants the chance to yell Jesus at somebody, I don't bother to engage him at all. Because as I've learned, an emphatic refusal leads to an email that accuses me of intellectual dishonesty, you know, something along the lines of, well, if you weren't scared, you'd debate me. And, and that leads to a response, that leads to a response, another response, and before I know it, I'm being debate raped. Now look, there was a time when I considered debates about the existence of God to be completely useless, but over the last couple of years, I've tempered my opinion of them. You can only hear from so many formerly religious people who credit their deconversion to religious debates before you have to admit to their utility. And when you really think about it, it makes sense. You know, my problem with debates about God's existence was always that debate just isn't a very good way to arbitrate matters of fact. You know, we don't, uh, like argue our way to a scientific consensus, we just test the hypothesis and see who's right. And despite religion's vehement claims to the contrary, the God hypothesis can be tested. You know, to whatever extent it's defined, it can be tested. And that test will fail. Does prayer work? No. Does God protect true believers? No. Does God punish the wicked? No. So what is there to debate, right? Now, of course, the problem with like universally applying this position is that it's too rational centric. Obviously, that's how a rational person would approach the question, and that's probably why so damn many rational people land on atheism. But if you're trying to reach irrational people, you can't always do it through peer-reviewed research. You know, a religious person gets his ass handed to him in an argument with an atheist at work. He goes home, he says, damn it, I'm going to show him. So he hops on YouTube, finds some debates, you know, learn how the pros argue against the heathens. Now, if this guy is intellectually honest, he's damn likely to realize eventually that the theist always loses. I mean, sure, you know, you'll find a debate here and there where you might say that the theist scored more points and presented the argument better, but if you're being honest with yourself, you're, you'll never think that the religious guy won the debate. You know, what starts as an effort to find all the good theistic arguments turns into a way to be blindsided by all the good atheist arguments while simultaneously coming to grip with the fact that there just aren't any good theistic arguments. So yeah, religious debates have value in the larger effort to lead people away from irrationality. And, and you know what? Even if they didn't, they would probably still have enough entertainment value to justify them. I love watching William Lane Craig babble about Boltzmann brains in a desperate effort to obfuscate the ridiculous degree to which he's wrong. You know, I, I love it when even the Christian audience winces at the stupidity of Ken Ham's answer. I love watching Matt Dillahunty school a biblical scholar on what the Bible says. And even if the price that we pay for this is the occasional debate where the person who's right technically loses, I'd say that's a price worth paying. You know, all that being said, though, that's not to say that any single atheist is ever obligated to debate. There are plenty of atheists who really enjoy doing the deep dive into apologetics and learning all the silly little pseudo-intellectual gymnastics that they do. I'm just not one of them. You know, unless I'm in a debate where that's just stupid as an acceptable rebuttal, it's not the debate for me. Because unlike the prominent debaters out there, I don't even find the question of God's existence interesting. You know, obviously I find religion interesting. I couldn't keep doing this show every week if the subject itself held no interest for me. But I find it interesting only because it's such conspicuous bullshit. You know, I find the ability of the human brain to so grossly misinterpret the world around it interesting. I find the various and contradictory forms and interpretations of God interesting. But as soon as you add in a person who actually thinks it's true, all the fun dries up. You know, it's like um, one of my sisters is a historian, right? And when we get together, we talk about counterfactuals. And the fact that I would love to talk with her about how the world might be different if the Holocaust never happened, that doesn't mean that I would enjoy arguing with a Holocaust denier. And in my mind, that's what it is. Debating the existence of God is like debating basic arithmetic or tic-tac-toe strategy. It is an answered question. And if there were enough people out there insisting that 2 plus 2 equaled potato chips, I would be really appreciative of all the mathematicians who spent their time going out there and publicly engaging these idiots and trying to clear for sullied name. And I'd be really interested in why the fuck those people think you can get a snack food by adding numbers together. And I'd make sarcastic jokes and do little skits about what a befuddlingly stupid worldview that is. But I wouldn't publicly debate them because if the stated goal of public debate is to sway the people on the wrong side over to the right side, it's probably not going to do you much good when the guy representing the right side opens up with something like, 
Can we start off by agreeing that pants and spoons exist so I have a baseline of how far removed from reality you actually are? Now, if this was just about me not wanting to do debates, it wouldn't have been worth devoting an entire diatribe to it. But I have to assume that a lot of you are in the same position to one degree or another. You know, and maybe you're not being heckled to debate people on podcasts, but maybe you've got some zealot in your family or at work who always wants to engage you with some kind of, man, how come they're still monkeys bullshit? Or maybe it's somebody that pipes in on your Facebook page ready to quote some Kent Hovind to you anytime that you mention the fact that God very clearly doesn't exist. And maybe you feel obligated to defend your worldview against their stupidity, and maybe you are. But that doesn't mean that you're obligated to debate them. Look, you know, I'm old enough to know what my strengths and weaknesses are, more or less. I mean, you know, I'm sarcastic, short-tempered, arrogant, and vulgar. Those are all things that would make me terrible in a public debate, but they help a lot in doing this podcast. So, yes, you're obligated to defend your worldview. You're obligated to counter the stupid. You're obligated to do your part to make this world more rational, and we need your help. But that doesn't mean we need you to debate. You know, if you're awesome at that shit, great. Have at it, have fun, and let me know. I'll pass your email along to some of these asshats that keep contacting me. But if you're not, you don't have a responsibility to get good at it. You know, we already have really good debaters, really good arguers, and there's no shame in passing along your problem, Theos, to somebody more qualified to engage them. There's something that you're really fucking good at, you know, some set of qualities that make you an asset to the atheist movement, and it's just a matter of figuring out what those are and applying them. I mean, shit, our chief contribution is dick jokes, and I think we found a way to make that relevant. My guess is that you've got more to offer than that.